Hey gang, Private Jack here. Welcome to part three of my series on how to decompile a static model, get it into Blender, edit it a little bit, and fire it back at Source Filmmaker as its own model. So basically in this session what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Crowbar. And because Crowbar is such a simple tool to use, install, and use, what I'm going to do is actually show you how I go about doing that. To get the tool, what I do is I go into Steam, go to Community, and head for the home page. From here, what I do is I've come down here into Groups because Zach Mackay has an actual group for this tool. And I type in here, Crowbar tool. Hit enter. And down here, right here, at Crowbar Source Engine Modding Tool is his group. Click on that, go to the group, and right here he has a download link for the tool. Click on that. It'll take you to the download page. Click on the current version that's available is point, uh, 0 0.24. It comes down as a 7Z compressed file. Click on that, take you to the download page, click on download, and you can put this thing anywhere you want on your computer. For simple use, what I do is I put it on my desktop. So save as, and throw it on my desktop. That's how fast it comes down. This is already downloaded complete. So I can exit out of that, I can exit out of this, and here's the tool right here on my desktop. I have I use WinRAR to decompress compressed files and I already have 7Z set up to work with it. So all I have to do now is right click on the file, drag it somewhere on my desktop, drop it and extract to. That will create the, a new folder on my desktop right here. Now it doesn't matter where this folder lives on your computer as long as the crowbar exe can find the data folder in the same folder that you put it in it's going to work. To use crowbar you can simply drag a sh and make a desk uh, shortcut on your desktop or just double click on the exe file. This is the graphic interface that Crowbar uses. It's pretty simply laid out. And as I mentioned in part one, this tool is not only a decompiler, but it is also a compiler. We're going to get into the compiler later on uh, when we actually start compiling models to go back into Source Film Maker. So we're just going to leave that for now. The decompiler, click on the decompiler tab, okay? And basically all you have to do is set up the information that you want to pull out of the model file, i.e. the QC file, the reference mesh. If you're working with the Left 4 Dead 2 survivors, uh, there's a glitch in the right hand and Zek has programmed Crowbar to fix that. And if you're using the Left 4 Dead 2 survivors, all you have to do is click that on to do the fix. Uh, level of detail mesh files, the collision model, the physics model, uh, vertex animations, VTAs, if you want the VTAs for, let's say we were doing one of the uh, models that have facial flexes, we can actually pull the VTA, uh, VTA out of the model file. Bone animations, if there's actual sequences built into the model, we can pull those animations out, ragdoll, idle, uh, whatever, and procedure bones, which are the jiggle bones and that kind of information. So, once I have this set up, uh, one, uh, let's go back here for a sec. Okay, extra information. If I click on this extra information stuff or debug info as comments and debug info files, what that does is it gives me extra files that if I find that I have a bug in Crowbar, I can actually send those files back to Zek on his uh, group page. There's a, a discussion link there for reporting bugs. 
he's going to want to see these files. And once we decompile the model, I'm going to leave these checked on. And once we decompile the model, I'm going to show you what these things are. Okay, so to decompile a model, all I have to do is point to the model file that I want to decompile. So browse, and in this particular case, we're going to do the photo badge. Uh, so the photo badge lives and game, source filmmaker game TF, because it's a TF model, and TF installs with source filmmaker. Go into the models folder, come down to player, it's a player item, player, items. This particular item is an all class item, so I'll drill into all class, and I find photo badge right here. This is the model that I want to decompile. I'm going to click on open once I select the model and it's going to put the information here. Now I can either decompile this model and send it back to a decompile folder under the all class uh, folder, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to access this thing quickly and not have to go looking for it. So I'm going to actually override the default folder by clicking full path. I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to send this back to my desktop. Desktop. Once I get into desktop I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder photo project. <clears throat> I'm going to click on photo project and drill into it and I'm going to open that. It places the information here in the full path and this is where it should decompile. However, I have found that there may be a bug in this particular thing and what will happen is after I first assign a new folder, I actually have to go back in and reassign it again or what will happen is it will decompile to the default folder under the folder where I pulled the model from. So browse again, go into desktop, photo project, open, and now it should end up here. Once I have this set up, all I have to do is click on decompile model. Once that's done, it writes a whole bunch of stuff here. If I go into the actual folder, I should find all the stuff that came out of that model. In this particular case, all there was was the QC and the reference mesh. If I drill into animations, it has an idle animation. And the log files, what these are, are a bunch of text files that if you find a bug in Crowbar, send it back to Zek. He's going to want to see these files so that he can determine where the program actually aired out. So if you're reporting a bug, go back to that group page, find the bug report uh, section, and basically throw these into a, a Dropbox or something like that and send them back to him. Or if they aren't really that big, copy and paste them into your, into your post. Okay. Anyway, that's decompiling a model. Let's go back into the folder here. So the SMD we're going to talk about when we get into Blender. The QC file we're going to talk about when we actually start using the model in Blender. I'm going to show you a little secret there uh, and that kind of thing. For a more complex model, and I'm going to decompile the HWM Sniper. So basically all I'm going to do is go browse. HWM models we could never decompile before because the old cannon fodder decompilers just didn't work with the newer type models. The cannon fodder decompilers were great during their time and basically they worked for what we needed to do. But now with the newer type models, they don't work anymore. This is the tool to use. So. The HWM models for Source Filmmaker live in the TF Movies folder. Okay, so we're going to drill into TF Movies, come down here to Models, 
player HWM sniper. This is the one that I want to decompile and I want to decompile it to my desktop. So I'm going to override the default folder, come in here, come back up to my desktop, create a new folder. I'm going to call this one Project Sniper. I'm going to drill into that folder, open it, and I'm going to do that again. Browse, back up to my desktop, find the Project Sniper, drill into it, open it again. I'm going to leave the information here. I'm not working with a Left 4 Dead 2 survivor, so I don't have to apply the fix and simply decompile. I could actually decompile a complete folder of models if I wanted to, uh, but in <laughs> I don't know why I would want to. So anyway, decompile the model, writes all the information out. If I drill into that folder now, I'm going to find all the associated SMDs for that particular model, all the body groups, I'm going to find the VTA file that contains the animation for the facial flexes, the QC. I'm going to find the sniper's physics model, which is the actual collision model. And if this model actually had level of detail files, all the level of detail files would be here as well. Level of detail files are the files that are used in a game when the camera is away from an object. The object collapses in on itself so that it doesn't use as many resources. In Source Filmmaker, we don't need level of detail files because the model doesn't collapse on itself. Anyway, here in the animations, I'm going to find the Ragdoll SMD and the Reference ref SMD. And again, in the actual log files, I'm going to find all the decompile logs that I can use for reporting bugs. So that is pretty much decompiling a model using Crowbar. And this is the tool to use. We haven't got to the point where we can actually decompile DMX type models. Any models that you decompile are going to be SMD uh, related source files which can be loaded into Blender and we're going to get into Blender in the next session. So basically that's all I can say about Crowbar and with that I'm going to say Private Jack out.